This episode of the Construction Record is brought to you by the Greater Toronto Sewer and Water Main Contractors Association. Clean water, our goal, our future. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Construction Record Podcast. I'm Digital Media Editor Warren Fry, and with me today I have... Nicole Schmidt with Source, the CEO and founder of Source. Okay, Nicole, um, we'll get into your background in a second, but maybe you could tell the listeners what Source is and what sort of niche it fills in the construction uh, field. Yeah, Source is a B2B marketplace and decision management platform. So one of the one of the things that we really focus on is um, bringing all the different data points from all the different products that are used in commercial construction and bringing those together onto one platform so that all the various stakeholders can can see the products that are being used, can you know, know who the contact is for that product and really understand um, all the technical aspects that are important when building complicated projects. Okay, and um, in terms of your background, how did you get into well, creating this in the first place? And, uh, how, and then how did the company come about? Yeah, so I've been in construction my whole career. I started out um, as an interior architect and worked on hotels and resorts around the country. And then about halfway through my career, I switched and became a manufacturer's rep and really worked uh, on a variety of different um, manufacturer types and roles, everything from sales, business development, marketing. Um, and it was really through that experience that I saw sort of the the gap in this industry as far as having mm-hmm. one central source, you know, pun intended, to to go to when you have questions on products like who's my rep, you know, what does it look and feel like in person? And so I actually built, taught myself to code and built the first version of our platform myself. And then we have since, you know, scaled along past that version of the platform, but that's kind of how it came together was I really just wanted to create a digital place um, that that the community could come to to find all the answers we need to make decisions in this industry. Okay, and you say across the country, I'm assuming that's the United States. Uh, we're a Canadian podcast, but we cover all of North America. So uh, does, the, does the product cover all of North America or is it just in the U.S.? Yeah, so currently it's just in the U.S. Um, and I am actually Canadian. I was uh, mm-hmm. born in Edmonton, and it's oh, certainly a growth market that we are certainly looking into. So mm-hmm. the digital version of our platform, of course, you can access from anywhere. Um, and then we also do have some um, physical spaces as well, which we currently only have those spaces in the U.S. Oh, okay, great. Uh, and so if I'm a contractor, how would I go about using this product in terms of like, can I use it in the field? Is there a mobile app? That kind of thing. Like what's what's sort of the, what are the accessibility points, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. So for contractors, typically, you know, they're looking for installation information, for pricing, for, you know, to get in touch with the rep, um, even product discovery sometimes. Right. So um, it's a web app. So you can use the application. It's cloud based. So you can use it from any browser. And it's really, um, really the place that you would go to if you wanted to know, you know, who's who's the rep that I need to contact to get pricing for this project? Or maybe you have a finish schedule from an architect or designer and you need to, you know, get your hands on submittal samples and get pricing and everything for your project. And so you can do all of those things um, on source um, because when we upload products to the platform, we also upload all of the reps for any local market. So, you know, whether you're in, um, you know, New York or Portland, Uh, which is where I'm based, you know, you can look at the reps for that individual product for your market and really start a conversation with them about, you know, how, how much you need, what the price is going to be, all of the technical information that you would need um, all in one place. Okay. And what stage, or is there one stage that is used more than another for construction? Is it primarily for design or sourcing of materials or is, or does it come in later? Like when they go, oh, we got this and instead we need that. You know, we do uh, across all stages, everything from SD to CA. We certainly um, do a lot of things in the beginning phases, but we also, you know, uh, one of the popular features is requesting an alternate. Um, and so, you know, we all know with the supply chain issues that we're all facing right now, um, you know, there's a lot of lead time issues. And so we see a lot of things like, you know, hey, we had X product spec on our project. The lead time is, you know, four months past when we need it. Can you guys help us find an alternate? So we mm-hmm. see everything across the 
project spectrum. It's our focus really is the products, um, no matter what phase of the project that it, you're on. Okay, and um, uh, construction is this is not a secret is a fairly legacy industry. It's getting better, but it's 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 a lot of pen and paper. So, what yeah. are some of the challenges you run into as something that isn't that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we very I very much agree. This is a legacy industry. That's a great great phrase. I'm going to steal from you, but. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think it's really important for us as a technology company to make our product dead simple to use. You know, it has to be very easy to understand what you're doing when you're on the platform um, and it has to feel familiar. And so, you know, some of the ways that we do that are that there's a there's a variety of ways to get information into the platform. So if um, let's say you have what like an example that we use is, you know, we had a project that had to get like 30 different submittal samples ordered. And so what we did was they just emailed our client services team and said, hey, I need to get my hands on these samples. And then our team actually, you know, builds that product on the back end and sends that link back to, you know, the contractor or the designer or whoever's using it so that our human services can really help augment different teams, whether they're in the field or whatever it is. Because sometimes you just have, like you said, a list, a paper, a napkin sketch, you know, something mm -hmm. that you're trying to to find. Um, and so there's ways for people to really just get that part of information to our team. And then we can help really get it into the platform and, and let our, our product specialists augment various teams. And I guess the flip side of that is um, I've talked to various uh, different sort of construction and management software firms and and they've well they said two things they've said a competition isn't as much a thing as you think it would be because everybody addresses a certain a certain area and kind of complements the other and they also try to integrate with one another so how how uh, if you do do you integrate with these other sort of platforms? Yeah, so we you know we don't have really integrations built out um, mm -hmm. today. One of the things that we have been asked for a lot um, are just, you know, getting the quantity of products into our platform um, so that you could really spit out pricing a lot faster. Um, so that is an area that we're looking at right now as far as like, you know, what tools are being used to capture quantities and takeoffs and how can we how can we integrate that because we have the price of the material. So helping people build those, um, you know, those budget spreadsheets a lot faster. Um, is one of the things. And then I think, you know, for us, we do see a lot of um, really there's there is a lot of potential with those integrations. And mm -hmm. and like you said, there's there's not a ton. I mean, I think everybody who's building technology in this industry, their biggest competitor is the way it's always been. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've announced, uh, I think back in April one, but there's been others, I'm sure, uh, partnerships with various companies and associations. Some of you go through a few of those. One of the ones that we launched was we had started um, a with Hightower Furniture, as far as on mm -hmm. the furnishing sides, we had started working with them to really bring some of the legacy data, some of the things that are really hard to find um, when you're working on this project to, together. So for example, we had, um, the furniture, every single piece of furniture that goes into a contract building has a list of fabrics that are associated with that furniture. And so what we've done is we've used our platform and taken that data and made associations with that data um, mm -hmm. so that you can now find all of that information on one platform at the click of a button instead of, you know, having to like dig through an individual manufacturer's website. So that was one of the partnerships that we kicked off um, last year and um, has been, you know, really well received by the industry and we're looking forward to you know reaching out to more furniture manufacturers and continuing down that road so that's been a good one for us i think another one i was thinking of was the one that was announced in april which was uh, you a partnership with the reference library in phoenix arizona so you could maybe explain what that was and how it sort of advantages both sides of this equation yeah absolutely so the reference library um like you said they're down in phoenix they've been there since the mid 80s and they are a physical library where you can go and and look at um you know different product samples and meet with reps and put your put your projects together um when we started the company we started um in portland oregon and we have a similar space up here and then we also have our digital platform right so we have this mm -hmm. um sort of digital product which is a word we sort of love hate to use but it yeah. it's really the blending of like our digital and physical workflows right that that mm -hmm. 
solutions in the built environment need to have that physical component to it. And so with the reference library, it was really a wonderful partnership um, that we that we put together because, you know, they already have these great relationships with the Phoenix community. They have this wonderful physical space. And then what we were able to do was to really augment their, their work that they had done with our digital platform so that people can now continue to work together in this new sort of, you know, I think, I think we're all sort of working in the digital and physical mm -hmm. world yep. now. And so we were able to partner with them to really be the, be the backbone um, for launching that in the Phoenix market. Uh, and finally, uh, I was wondering, as a woman in construction and as a CEO, what were the challenges be be behind that? And also, what are the advantages? Like, presumably, you have a different perspective than, say, a 60-year-old man in the construction space. Yeah. You know, I think, like you said, there's there's flip sides to every coin, right? And so mm -hmm. for me, you know, I often do find myself as, um, you know, the only or one of the only women in the room, um, both as a CEO and as, you know, a, a member of the construction community. And for me, I, I definitely see that as an opportunity to um, sort of point that out sometimes and, and really help bring up women in this industry. Um, because certainly many women did that for me coming before me. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's really important to, to create inclusive spaces um, and inclusive companies where where that is more the norm um, than the exception. So that's that's one of the things that I see as, you know, the opportunity um, with being a woman in construction is really helping bring more women into the field. Do you think the sort of on ongoing sort of encroachment of tech helps with that? Because it, it you know, it, is it a level playing field or is it not? Or a uh, you leveler know, of the playing field, I guess. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that uh, tech really has the, the best reputation for... No, no it doesn't. That's why I stopped more there. Inclusive. So it's, maybe there's three different ways that I'm often the only woman in the, woman in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but I think, you know, we really, as as a society, we continue to have these conversations. And, and I do think very much like act, the actions that we take after we have these conversations are the strongest things that we can do. And so, you know, for me, whether that looks like, you know, changing recruiting practices and making sure that we're filling our own pipeline with candidates that that have have the parameters of diversity that we want to make sure that we instill in our company. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that I can do as a leader to say, you know, we can't fix everything, but we can make sure that in this company um, that we are creating a model that is more inclusive, more diverse, um, and more equitable moving forward. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's it it small steps can go a long way. So mm -hmm. okay. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Warren. This episode of The Construction Record is brought to you by the Ontario Sewer and Water Main Construction Association. Clean water is everybody's business.